Hello again, and thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. It is much appreciated. In this post, I'm going to test the low Bollinger Band trading strategy that you can find on the FragTrade GitHub repository with algorithmic trading strategies. So let's find out how this algo will make us hypothetically very rich. The low Bollinger Band is a very simple strategy that has not a lot of complicated rules or indicators. It only uses the low Bollinger Band for a buy signal. But before I tell you too much right away, let's first give credits where credits are due. According to the file, the author is called Thorsten, and I don't know if it is his first name or last name, but Thorsten, thank you very much for your code. And as said, this strategy is very simple to follow and explain. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into the code to see how it works. You can open the code by visiting the FragTrade site and follow the links to the strategy repository. Or you can just follow this link you see over here. First of all, the necessary modules and libraries are loaded. And then the mandatory FragTrade parameters are loaded like the ROI, which has three points in time defined, where take profits are determined. The highest ROI is set to 90% profits, which is a pretty bold target point, I might say. Otherwise, 50% after 15 minutes or 5 and 4% points after respectively 1 and 10 minutes. The stop loss is set to minus 1.5% loss. If that is reached, the bot will sell its position again. So as you see, this strategy has a super tight stop loss and a very ambitious ROI setting, to say the least. Also, the 1 minute time frame is set for this strategy. But the best I can do is 5 minutes, so hopefully I can see a little bit of this strategy's potential at a time frame that is 5 times larger. The parameters section is a little bit messy. The Bollinger Bands are defined 2 times here and I see no difference between these two configurations. Also, the MACD is configured, but it will not be used anywhere in the buy or sell triggers. And here you can also see some other remnants of other indicators, but they are all commented out. And now for buying, the buy trigger is given when the close price of the pair is lower than 0.98 times the Bollinger lower band. Which means that the close price does not have to be completely below the lower Bollinger band but it is allowed to close 0.98 times the lower Bollinger Band. So to give you an example, if the lower Bollinger Band has a value of 27,920 USDT, then there will be a buy signal if the close price is lower than 0.98 times 27,920, which is 27,361.60 USDT. And if the price gets any lower than that, then the stop loss gets quickly hit because of its tight settings. As you can see over here, there is no sell signal. So this strategy depends only on the ROI and stop loss to take care of the sell signals for the position. And for those people who start to think that they saw this strategy earlier, then you are correct. The Cluck May strategy that I discussed earlier in another video has almost the same settings for its lower Bollinger Band buy signal. The only difference here is that there were two other indicators that were also part of the complete buy signal on the Clock May strategy. So based on this you can state that the same strategy like the Clock May will be tested once again. But since the two other indicators are not part of the buy or sell triggers in this code, I will consider this another algorithm. So therefore let me test this strategy to see if only using the lower Bollinger Bands as an indicator for buying will be enough. Hopefully it will provide us with successful trade signals and make us some hypothetical profits. After the initial backtest, it seems that this strategy has a higher score on the 15 minute time frame. But surprisingly enough, I have not seen any algorithm that performs good and still manages to have over 95% of losing trades. You can clearly say in this case that this is definitely a pure example of cutting your losses and letting your winners run. 
In this case, the ultra tight stop loss of minus 1.5% makes this algo cut its losses so quick that of the 3,239 trades, it exits with a loss of 3,080 occasions. But the ROI still manages to make good money on 151 trades though. And with a drawdown of almost 37% on this time frame, it is actually not such of a bad performer. I have seen other algorithms that score lower with very high win rates. And this time it clearly shows that a high win rate does not say anything. It is here a matter of catching the right trades and quickly abandon those that prove not to give any direct results. Also looking at the plot of the initial backtest results, you can clearly see that the profit curve at some point has a nice upward slope. Especially after the first and highest drawdown period, it picks up momentum and makes the highest profits. Which is actually also a little bit logical, because a lot of coins that I used for this backtest were starting at the time of this period. And they all picked up momentum in the last bull cycle. The highest drawdown moment appears around the peak of the last bull market. I'm now starting to get curious to see what happens if I optimize the ROI and stop loss parameters. Will it still be as neat as this or will the performance become worse after that? Let's find out. So after optimizing the ROI and stop loss parameters, I got some totally different ROI and stop loss settings. And by the way, you can find these in the complete output package I leave behind for my patrons, by the way. And as you can see, yes, lucky me, the 15 minute time frame is manageable by my PC. So fairly quick calculations in this case. Now let's hope that these newer settings makes the strategy performance better. And in a certain way, the lower Bollinger Band strategy does manage to improve some of its ratios with the newer ROI and stop loss settings. However, what it improves on the win rate, drawdown and sharp ratio, it mainly loses in profitability and the hypothetical end amount of money you could make in the past. Looking at the buy and sell events of the backtest, we see that the stop loss and ROI exit signals have a rough 3 to 1 ratio. Which means that for every win there will be a little bit more of 2 losses. Also, every winning trade has an average profit of slightly less than 6%, while the stop loss loses around 2%. In the original strategy settings, these were quite different. Every win was around 50% and every loss around 1.5%. So a big difference here. The plot of the optimized settings show a totally different picture. The profit plot shows a nice and steady upward line and only has the largest drawdown in the late period of 2022. Overall, these lines are much smoother in comparison with the original line. Also, the drawdown chart was at around 18% at its largest, and it shows that this strategy is negatively influenced by the bearish period. But my observation is that the drawdown relatively quickly gets negated and then starts to stay around the zero line, which is always a nice feeling by the way. Finally I notice that the parallelism graph has less black than in the initial graph. And according to the results, the amount of pairs that reacts positively on this algorithm is also around 60%, just like the initial one. But it seems that the boss has less active open trades. Now, because both results have a score of 195%, I have to make a choice on which version should enter the strategy league. And again, I have to be the deciding factor that determines the final outcome. It will come down to the psychology of the trading bot's owner. Do I want to see my bot have losing trades day after day, knowing that the big winner will be coming someday, or perhaps never? Or do I choose for a moderate incline of my trading balance and have a higher chance that I will see winning trades now and then? Also, there will be losing trades, but in the optimized settings the drawdown is around half of the original version. But do not let yourself fooled by this, because the Kalmar indicates that the original settings have the far better ratio. However, my observation is that the drawdown chart in the initial settings has too much green, which states that if your account suffers drawdown, it is more intense and also takes a lot longer to get into a profitable position again. So the choice is, do I take more risk and have higher gains, 
and also test my nerves with the market circumstances stay bad or do I choose for lower gains and also ease of mind and after some thought I have chosen for ease of mind and will not be greedy so therefore I've chosen for the settings that hyper optimization gave me now for the strategy league it does not matter because with its score this algo strategy will end up at the same spot anyway and comparing it with some of his close neighbors it scores a little bit bleak but then again there are also other algos that have a even lower profit percentage but nonetheless score super high on the win rate so you see this is why you should take a look at the bigger picture YouTube movies that promote strategies with a 100% win rate do not guarantee life-changing wealth. And some strategies that have a lower win rate just score awesome. So you see, there is no single truth, but only solid investigation and conclusions. In this case, just be inspired by the way this algorithm was built, how this could lead to these hypothetical results, and see how you can apply this knowledge to your own crypto algo strategy. And with this small nugget of knowledge, I want to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And also, my patrons will get access to all these files and optimization results. In the meantime, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!